Hi guys, Kotyutar here and my name is Anil Deshpande. So let's continue the discussion of notifications in this video. In this video, we will be mainly concerned with how to go about the implementation of the overall notification and notification navigation. It basically has three steps. The first one is you need to get started with the registration of the notification channel and then you need to construct the notification itself. And to do that, you use various types of APIs that are provided by Android. For example, for the registration of the notification channel, you use channel ID, channel name, both of which are strings and then notification channel which is an API provided by Android and to construct notification you use some more APIs like notification manager and notification compact dot builder notification dot compact builder comes with lot of helper methods to set the title small icon description basically the various placeholders that you typically want to fill with a particular information when the notification actually gets rendered in the device this is only about how notification should look like when it gets triggered the remaining part is what should happen when you click on the notification ideally it should actually navigate to one of the activity in your application and to do that you use few more apis like notification manager and pending intent so broadly speaking there are two sections here the first one is the construction of the notification and then the second one is notification navigation most of these are pretty straightforward because they are just apis you need to be just familiar with the setter methods that's all little bit more tricky part here is pending intent which needs a little bit more explanation as to why we can't use a normal intent why do we need to use this new thing called as pending intent so we will spend some time in this video to understand the whole idea behind usage of pending intent if you recall you basically have three components in a android application that is an activity service and a broadcast receiver your application need not have all of these but generally speaking these are the main components which usually get triggered using intents and all of these components come under one single monolithic process that is application you trigger each of these different components that all lie within an application using intents so to do that a normal intent should be more than sufficient but notifications are slightly different handling notifications comes under the OS control it is not actually under the app control of course you can trigger the notification but what do I mean by handling notification is how it should be shown how long it should be shown in which area of the device it needs to be shown it is completely a different service itself which is under the control of OS. You don't have much control over the overall management of the notification area in the mobile device. And that is why you cannot use a intent to trigger a notification. What you basically need is a, some kind of a mechanism to hand over the handling of the notification to the OS. But before you hand over the handling aspect, when I say handling aspect, what I basically mean is the navigation. You need to tell the OS how this navigation is supposed to happen. To do that we basically use pending intent. Pending intent is same as intent but to be triggered later point in time by someone else and in this case typically OS and that is why you use a pending intent. Using a pending intent is a three step process and in the first step you create an intent there is nothing spectacular about it you just use a normal intent class you use the flags just the way you use a normal intent you need to give activity name that needs to be triggered or a service that needs to be triggered anything for that matter but most of the times with notifications on click of the notification you want to trigger an activity so you need to give the name of the activity that needs to be triggered or whether it needs to be triggered as a separate task without any backstack or with the task with the backstack all those things you need to be 
aware once you create an intent you need to then create a pending intent we will definitely have a look at how to create a pending intent and what are all the different arguments that particular constructor takes but you get started with creation of the intent and then you create a pending intent and the last part is you basically pass the intent as an argument to a pending intent so one of the argument when you create a pending intent is the intent itself so that is why it would not be wrong to say that pending intent is same as intent but only the difference is this will be handled by some other third party entity and in this case it is os so i think now we are pretty much well equipped to see how to create the notification and actually do the notification navigation and we shall dedicate the next video completely for that purpose that brings us to the end of this particular video don't forget to like comment share the video and subscribe to the channel take care bye